I'm Anjani Nader, Communications Director for the California College Democrats. Today we're going to be interviewing Assemblymember Tom Torlinson. Assemblymember, for the people who don't know too much about you, do you mind introducing yourself? Not at all. I'm Tom Torlinson. I'm an Assemblymember, a former Senator, and a teacher who's running for Superintendent of Public Construction to bring our schools back to the greatness we once enjoyed and do some reforms in our schools. Assemblymember, yes or no, will you attend the meetings of the UC Board of Regents and the CSU Board of Trustees? Absolutely, yes. We need strong representation there, and I'll be there. Okay. Second, now that we've seen the results of the federal race to the t top program, with only Tennessee and Delaware being awarded funds, do you mm -hmm. think California should continue to participate? Well, we should continue to participate in some way. The problem with the legislation that passed was that it was shoved top-down, it was rushed, it wasn't built as a team effort or community effort where parents and teachers and school board members could build a support base for it. And there was also a lack of accountability for charter schools, which is one of the other faults. But I, I believe we have to look very carefully at it in terms of how to proceed. We certainly should apply and go after some of the federal money if it fits a California need that we can define and, and work in a California way. Uh, we have more pressing issue right at this moment, which is a huge budget crisis that's threatening education far more than whatever we might get out of the federal funding. And so that's where I think we should have our concentration. And um, California is a very diverse state. What do, you, what do you plan to do to address the achievement gap in California? Well, that's a persistent and very troubling gap between different groups of students in California and Latino students and African-American students are lagging behind their white and Asian-American counterparts. And so we, we have a, a problem here, yet we know what some of the solutions are. We need to start very early with zero to five, preschool, full day kindergarten, and then youngsters can get to the starting line if they've grown up in poverty, they've grown up in a household where the parents don't speak English, or if they've grown up in a household where the parents don't have any formal education, they don't read books, they'll have a chance in that preschool environment and the quality child's child care environment from zero to five to really get to the starting line and with full day kindergarten in first grade they're going to have a lot better chance of succeeding and keeping up with other students and and excelling the other thing is health care for kids because the kids that are in families with poverty they're absent more they're they're in their seats in the classroom but they're plagued with some kind of illness that is to take it away from their learning. So I'm going to concentrate a lot on making sure that all children in California have access to good health care. Then a number of other things we need to concentrate on English language learner strategies so the best practices are made available by the superintendent and districts are uh, partners with the state in finding the best way that fits the students of that particular part of California. And one other thing is something I'm strong about is career technical education. If we find more ways to motivate young people to see a future for themselves where their talents and their dreams can take them, they'll stay in school and they won't drop out and they'll work and do the homework, learn the English language, uh, get ready for that job because that's something they really want. And most issues involving funding or reform fall under the legislature's um, jurisdiction. How would you lobby the legislature for cooperation? Well, I'm going to be very hands-on, roll up the sleeves hands-on. That's one of the unique aspects of what I offer as a candidate for superintendent. I have the experience as a classroom teacher, working in the classroom teaching ecology, biology, and science uh, back in the 70s, and doing that for a good period of time and coaching young people for 25 years, teaching in a community college. So I have classroom experience, but this, one of the strongest suits I have is being able in the legislature to work to bring leaders together Republicans and Democrats together, business and labor together, to solve big problems. And one example is the school bonds. We couldn't get done in the, in the 1990s. I found a way to bring bipartisan support behind a $9.5 billion bond measure, which was five times what anybody thought we could do. And that's been replicated now with four votes of the public. So we, we can do things in the legislature to improve education, to change the rules and regulations, and most importantly, to stop cutting stop cutting higher education, stop cutting K-12, and I will be involved in the legislative arena with the President Pro Tem of the Senate, the Speaker of the Assembly, and legislators in general to form an alliance to protect education. Thank you. And if elected, what would be the first official duty you'd perform? Well, I'll be 
wanting to get the budget in control, that's the key factor right now, we face a $20 billion state budget deficit, uh, so that's a key e effort that needs to be put under control. The other thing that I will be doing, and I'll start right away after being sworn in, every Monday bringing together the stakeholders for education, bringing together the teacher organizations, the parent organizations, the school boards, uh, the administrators, the higher education representatives, to meet with the top staff of the Department of Education and myself and plan out what are, the, what are the urgent priorities of this week and what's our urgent set of priorities for the next three months and then the next six months and, and plan out a system of responsiveness that would enable us to tackle problems and set priorities as we go. Thank you. And what would you do similarly and differently from, your, from the current Democratic um, incumbent, Jack O'Donnell? Well, uh, Superintendent Jack O'Connell's been a valiant warrior on behalf of education, you know, he stood up and fought for what the kids of California need and I admire that and I'm going to follow in his footsteps and being a very clear voice for what's needed um, and I will be again also working in the legislative arena so I commend the current superintendent for years of hard work and uh, focusing on the achievement gap and focusing on the dreadful dropout rate. These are things that I want to continue to have sharp focus on and, and reduce the wasteful, disgraceful dropout rate and close that achievement gap. Thank you. And what will you do to ensure that students who attend college are prepared for the job? Well, all education is a preparation for life and getting ourselves aware of our own talents and inner strengths and, and then setting goals and dreams of what we want to accomplish. And so higher education should be the same as K-12 education, especially for um, middle school and high school students, having them start to think about where they're going to go later in life and, and get the idea of college in the minds of middle school students and high school students. The AVID program is one of those that really helps in that regard. And then as it relates to multiple pathways, more career choices, more academic pathways to maybe being in construction as an engineer or an architect, but maybe being in construction as someone who wants to go to work in an apprenticeship school, learn the craft of being an electrician or a machinist or a carpenter or a plumber and have a really good life, good, good health, good wage, good retirement benefits. So those are kinds of choices. And as for higher education, it's the same kind of focus is making sure we have counselors for students to talk to as they begin their lower division work as freshmen and sophomores. Where do you want to go? What, what do you want out of this education and, and how can we tailor the courses you're taking to fit that? Too many students don't, don't have that benefit of counseling and there's a bit of drifting around. Now, finding what, what it is that gets you excited about learning and excited about a, a future job that may take some exploration, but many students aren't offered the guidance to go where they already know they want to go. And I want to provide more help for the state universities, the UC campuses, and our community colleges, which are, in many cases, the feeder institutions to the higher education institutions. And how would you use the office to specifically fight against the fee increases facing college students? such as UC and SCSU and community college students? Well, I'll be a loud voice against those kinds of fee increases. We've had just too many fee increases, too much tuition increase. The debt burden on students today has multiplied many times over what it should be and where it was uh, when I went to school. Um, it's, it's just wrong. And then we have not just the burden, the financial burden of the fees and tuition costs, but the fact that there are so many furloughs at the CSUs, there are so many uh, budget cuts, the courses that are needed for a nursing degree or an engineering degree aren't being offered. And then that means it's taking four and a half to five to five and a half years to graduate. And that costs a lot. It keeps, it's a burden, a debt burden on the students who are struggling to get their full education and go to work. And it's a detriment to the economy because these students aren't able to get to work with all their talent and training the sooner. So I'm, I'm very focused on that and fighting, standing up and fighting those kind of uh, tuition and fee increases. And for students who would like to get involved in your campaign, what should they do? Well, we have a dynamic campaign, and I'm so proud to say that uh, college Democrats, the uh, young Democrats and Democrats college students across the state have rallied behind my candidacy, and we're 
we have a team effort going on everywhere with, with phone outreach, internet outreach. So we're really welcoming the energy, the vision, uh, the the work, the hard work that students are willing to put in in this campaign. And I'm inspired already by uh, the generous support that I'm getting from young Democrats and college students across California. So um, I have a webpage, TomTorlakson.com. Visit our webpage and uh, log on that you want to volunteer, and we'll find a place where you can uh, channel those energies and good wishes to some good result. Thank you, Assemblymember. Enjoyed it. Thank you.